Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic in oral surgery is antiplatelet tricks. So, they are mm, affecting the platelet uh, aggregation or clot formation. So, they are also known as anti aggregant. Anti aggregant because it is against the uh, aggregation of platelets so these are members of a class pharmaceuticals which decrease the platelet aggregation and inhibits thrombus formation and uh, they are effective in arterial circulation so it basically prevents the thrombus formation prevent thrombus that is a clot so basically the clot formation is a fundamental thing of blood coagulation so that mechanism will be prevented when we use antiplatelet tricks so we may have conditions where we are not supposed to have a clot formation in our blood so in order to maintain that state we used to consume antiplatelet tricks so what is the mechanism of action so these tricks uh, they have the ability to suppress the production of prostaglandins and thromboxin uh, it's due to its reversible inactivation of the cyclooxygenase enzymes so cyclooxygenase enzymes uh, will be inactivated irreversibly okay so these uh, enzymes so that is the cyclooxygenase enzymes are required for prostaglandins and thromboxane synthesis so it is basically to suppress the production of prostaglandin and thromboxane by inactivating this particular enzyme that is a function of antiplatelet drugs so this therapy with one or more of the drugs which decreases the ability of blood clot uh, to form by interfering with the platelet activation process that is uh, primary hemostasis so anti-platelet drugs can reversibly or irreversibly inhibit process involved in platelet activation resulting in decreased tendency to that platelet to adhere to one another and damaged blood vessel endothelium now let's move on to the classification so in classification, uh, first one we have irreversible cyclooxygenase inhibitors. So we learned that it inhibiting the cyclooxygenase enzyme which is involved in the prostaglandin and thromboxin production. So this is like irreversible cyclooxygenase inhibitors that is the most common one is aspirin then triflucyl Triflucyl, which is known as discrin. So, brand name that is the first one, the most common aspirin and triflucyl. Then we have the ADP receptor inhibitors, that is the adenosine diphosphate receptor inhibitors. The most common one is clopidogrel, then uh, we have trasugrel, P R A S U G R E L, then triclopidine, triclopidine, P I D I N E. That is the ADP receptor inhibitors. Now we have protease activated receptor 1 antagonist. Okay, the protease activated receptor that is a PAR1 antagonist. That is Vorapaxar. Vorapaxar. V O R A P A X A R. Vorapaxar. 
then uh, we have the glycoprotein uh, inhibitor which is uh, given only through IV intravenously they are um, adziximab adziximab it is ADCI XIMAB and uh, tirofiban so these are tirofiban so these are glycoprotein inhibitors and uh, one more category we have that is thromboxane inhibitors so the thromboxane inhibitors are terutrobin that is T E R U T R O B A N terutrobin okay so these are the commonly used antiplatelet drugs so categories are cyclooxygenase inhibitors ADP receptor inhibitors protease activated receptor antagonist glycoprotein inhibitors thromboxane inhibitors and the indications are primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease then acute ischemic events myocardial ischemia cerebral ischemia atrial fibrillation antenna that is a chest pain and peripheral artery disease and it can also be used after angioplasty and stent placement that is a very commonly used that is most commonly aspirin is used and after the heart bypass or any valve replacement because the clot formation is very much uh, bad for this uh, stent and valve because if there is any clot formation uh, the complications will arise for that person who underwent the surgery and also it can be used to prevent the formation of blood glues in people with atrial fibrillation atrial fibrillation so the main contraindications of antiplatelet drugs are uh, people who are ris having risk of bleeding that is active peptic ulcer disease or people with uncontrolled hypertension uh, people with hypersensitivity and allergy and also people with asthma so what are the side effects of these antiplatelet drugs the most common is the nausea vomiting stomach upset stomach pain diarrhea the rashes itching swelling of face and hands fever chills and sore throats so that is about antiplatelet drugs so we learned the mechanism then the various classification its indications contraindications and side effects so it is a commonly asked short note for oral surgery exam hope you understood this small concept you need to write about the mechanism classification indication contraindication and lastly the side effects i'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery thank you